and, and WST. So I'm, uh, I'm so sorry for those uh, online who were uh, expecting other um, uh, talks on other subjects. Um, unfortunately, this is the uh, 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 way it has to be. Can do, it's okay. okay, thanks a lot and good morning to everyone. And thanks to the organizer to give me the chance to tell you about two very exciting projects. So Formos and WST. Uh, let's start from Formos. So Formos stands for four meter multi-object spectroscopic telescope. As you can see from the banner at the bottom of these slides, uh, is a large consortium with many institutes in Europe and uh, in, in Australia. The leading institute is AIP in Potsdam, where the PI also is located, the role of the young. Um, and here you can see, of course, an image of Vista where the Formos will be uh, essentially operating so what foremost is, I mean, in one sentence we could say is the wide field, high multiplex optical spectroscopic survey facility that we will have for the ESO community very soon. Uh, in fact, the status of the project is such that we are in assembly phase, testing phase, so very close to go to the mountain and then start operations. So currently the forecast for starting scientific operation is at the end of next year. Uh, where we will st start conducting a first five-year survey, which will probably continue in a second five-year survey. So science, uh, as is uh, in the case in many of these multi-object spectrograph, is very broad, go from cosmology to galaxy evolution, to characterizing the energy universe, uh, and also follow up with transients, especially connected to the LSST, as well as, of course, uh, detailed studies of the kinematic and chemical composition of our galaxy. Um, is really uh, believe, um, is really conceived as a complementary to many uh, space missions like Gaia, Erosita uh, nowadays, but also Euclid in the future and Plato. As well, it's definitely complementary to many ground-based survey, and I think it's particularly relevant for this audience, uh, Vista and VST, as well as in the future SKA, but LSST and DES. Um, so this is a survey facility, of course, by definition, which means that uh, we have a consortium that has de we delivered the instrument to ESO, but also in a new concept, we also operate the instrument. At least a large fraction of the operation will be led by the consortium, and the consortium will be also in charge to produce data products that will come back to the community and to ESO uh, archive. Uh, as I said, we run the survey in five years, but with a uh, innovative concept, at least for ESO, to run different survey in parallel, which means that at the same time, in one single exposure, you will have fibers that will be feeding target from different surveys. Um, they, we have key surveys, essentially take most of the time, and additional surveys that uh, I will describe in a minute. So, so, but a bit of characteristic of the instrument, as I said, is a wide field. Wide field in this case means uh, a bit more than four square degree field of view, uh, which is equipped with a high multiplexes, multiplexing 2,400 fibers, um, which will be freely located in this uh, field of view. And uh, two thirds of the fibers will fed the two low resolution, medium resolution spectrograph, uh, which uh, uh, will uh, provide spectrograph resolution between 4 and 7,000 in the optical, so from 370 to 950. And uh, one, the remaining one third of the fibers will feed the one high resolution um, spectrograph, which uh, will allow us to get spectra with respect resolution of 20,000. Again, in a specific pass band in the optical that you can see defined here. And, uh, um, and both of them will, of course, uh, operate simultaneously. Um, so this is in an image uh, design, if you want, of where the different components I just mentioned will be at Vista. So you can recognize, for example, the high resolution spectrograph this, uh, on the left and the two low resolution spectrograph on the right. And then other very important key components of Formos that are, for example, the positioner, the fiber positioner, which will be in charge to position the fiber precisely on the focal plane, as well as the wide field collector that allow us to reach such a wide field of view. Then we have metrology camera to be sure that the fiber is on target, as well, of course, calibration units. Um, this uh, just for the audience, because of course, to make it space for foremost, we needed to the commission and the remove Virkam. So last spring, there was a mission uh, in Paranal to essentially detach Virkam from Vista, as you can see, and store it in a safe place. So Virkam does a lot of you know, great science, as I think what we have been discussed, and now we are moving to foremost. 
Um, so this is, a, to me, at least a very exciting slide because essentially show you that all those little things in the design that I show you before are actually real and are assembled. And this is a picture taken in the lab in Potsdam where you can see essentially the main components that have been assembled and are currently being tested. So you can recognize on the top left uh, the fiber positioner that has been developed by AAO in Australia is an evolution of the Kidma design. And so this is we've been charged to position those 2,400 fibers I mentioned before precisely on the focal plane. Then you can recognize uh, the low resolution spectrograph, those black boxes there, as well as the high resolution spectrograph down here. So as I said, we are in testing phase in Potsdam, and we foreseen that soon we will be able to start shipping uh, components to Paranal. Um, so more words a bit on the spectrograph. So this is the design of the low resolution spectrograph it is a three arm spectrograph. So we have a red, blue and a green camera. Um, again, as I said, it is 800 fibers for each spectrograph and this has been developed by Kral in Lyon. And maybe for scientists, this is the most important figure that show you the spectral resolution that we will be able to achieve in the optical, in the three camera and as you can see compared to the red that is the spec we had originally we were well above specs um, and again pictures taken from the lab in Lyon to show you the camera how it was assembled with the detectors the dichroic and the collimator and uh, again another slide on the other component is the high resolution spectrograph again this is a design with three camera blue red and green and this was uh, designed as well as built by the London Schoenwart in Heidelberg. And again, the spectral resolution was wavelength plot to show you how in the three pass band in the optical, the spectral resolution that we will be achieving is well above the spec, which was originally 18,000. Uh, and again, picture from the lab in Heidelberg to show you the camera, much bigger camera, of course, uh, how it's assembled with the detect detector, the dichroic and the collimator. Uh, and then another important component is the ASOP, that is the fiber positioner. As I said, this was developed by AO in Australia, and this is uh, really the key part to position the fibers, of course, on the focal plane. Um, some interesting numbers for, uh, for the scientists is that we will be able to position fiber as close as 15 arc seconds, and the petrol area of each fiber is six arc minutes. You can see the fibers moving up there. And this image essentially to show you essentially as in the focal plane, the fiber will be located and the different petrol uh, field of each fiber being low resolution or high resolution. Um, so this is a summary slide to show you um, produced by the Formos Consortium to show you the predicted uh, sensitivity. So the man limiting magnitude that you have as a function of wavelength, uh, you, the dashed line is for 20 minute exposure. The continuum line is for two hours exposure and essentially give you um, a, an understanding of how deep you can go according, of course, to the measurements you want to do. So being abundances or stellar parameters or, or simply just a galaxy redshift. And based on this performance, this is what essentially at the cornerstone of the science that the, the consortium and the community will be doing with Formos. As I said at the beginning, this is a wide field optical spectrograph, so we'll cover a broad range of science. So we'll go from galactic radiology in straight uh, link with Gaia and plasma in the future. As I say, characterization of the energy sky, this is a de definitely link with the Aerocita space mission. And galaxy evolution, we will have strong synergy with the uh, legacy imaging from VISTA and VST. And on the cosmology side, again, connection with Lucid, that we just heard about, uh, and of course, in the future with Rubin and SKA. Um, this is the 10 uh, service that the consortium has uh, defined and designed and will be performing in the first five years. Uh, um, you can see here we are going from four dedicated galactic surveys targeting different parts of the galaxy, being the ELO or the bulge, uh, one um, survey dedicated to the Magellanic cloud, and then four extragalactic surveys going from cosmology to the study of AG. OVGN, and finally, one time domain survey that is really linked to LSST follow up. Um, there is a dedicated messenger um, issue of two years ago where you can find a lot of details on the single survey. I will not have the time to go through them in detail. 
Uh, and this is uh, what we received, I mean, what was selected from the community uh, in terms of additional survey. Because as I said, originally we had 70% of the first five years dedicated to GTO survey, 30% was uh, open for our community. We went through a dedicated call for proposal. We received uh, several letter of intent proposals, and this was the final selection made by our uh, scientific panels. And so you can see uh, there is 15 surveys that have been approved roughly half and half in terms of galactic and extragalactic with some time domain survey. And um, essentially they are covering, uh, 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 if you want, uh, complementary science to what we defined by the consortium, but a key feature is also that we believe they can be done together in a five-year survey plan. Uh, and again, there is a recent uh, messenger issue where you can find the details of the single survey. As I said, I don't have time to go between each of the survey, but I just pick up three examples, uh, I thought because of the topic of the meeting, to show the synergy between a spectroscopic survey facility as this one and the imaging that we have been accumulating with VISTA and VST. And VST. So the first one is uh, the 1001 Magellanic Cloud Surveys led by Maria Rosa, which is here, so she can correct me if I say something wrong. <laughs> and I mean, in one sentence, I think uh, what we, they want to do is to measure kinematics, element abundances in a very ra wide range of stellar population to understand which is essentially the history and the interaction the Magellanic Clouds went through. And I just took one uh, plot from their messenger article to show you how the selection is heavily based on a combination of near-infrared near imaging, mostly by VISTA, so VMC for the central part of the clouds, a VHS for the outer part of the clouds, in combination also with the optical, for example, Gaia to remove uh, Milky Way stars. So clearly this show a strong synergies with the imaging. This is at the foundation of this spectroscopic survey. Another survey, this is coming from the community. Uh, this is a 4 HS, it stands for Foremost Hemisphere Survey of the Nearby Universe. The PI are Edward Taylor and Michelle Clever in uh, Australia. And what they want to do is really to do a uniform and as complete as possible spectroscopic survey of the local universe, where local means here below ratio 0.15. They aim to collect 6 million spectra and for galaxies in this redshift range. And, the, and the, one of the aim is really to map the mass and the, and the motion in the local volume, but as well as uh, study galaxy evolution as a function of environment in the local universe. And again, target selection is heavily based on VHS photometry, VISTA VHS photometry, and you, you can see the color cut and the magnetic cut they did. So again, the foundation of the definition of this survey was relying heavily on imaging. And then moving to really a redshift, the last mention, the last survey I want to mention is the cosmic cosmology redshift survey. This is again a survey from the consortium led by Jan Richard and Jean Paul Kneipp. And they want to do, of course, stringent cosmological tests, combining spectroscopic cluster measurements with the proper spectral resolution with complementary weak lensing measurements, like for example, we have been just heard from Euclid. And I mean, again, the color selection is key to select targets in the appropriate redshift range, as well as uh, the proper kind of galaxies. But at the same time, as we know, many of these uh, probes uh, rely on cross-correlating imaging data sets with spectroscopic redshift, uh, which mitigates some of the systematic being, for example, being able to calibrate photo Z as well as galaxy bias. So again, I think another clear example of strong synergy between imaging and spectroscopy. And um, last uh, couple of slides on foremost, uh, to just stress the observing strategy we will conduct. As I say, this is a bit of a unique operational model at TISO in which you are really merging different surveys in the same exposure. Uh, all survey will be run in parallel, and this is because of efficiency. We want to really take full advantage of the multiplexing we have for foremost. We have key surveys that design the survey strategy and then a smaller uh, survey that I uh, are, if you want, add on. And we will have the classical wedding cake um, structure with shallower surveys, say minimum 30 minute exposure up to deep fields, up to 100 hour exposure. And the last slide of survey is again to um, foremost is to, the, to stress the importance of how we will run operation. This is delegated in partly to the consortium. So we will have, of course, target and observing success criteria designated by the survey. Then we will have uh, almost automatic uh, front end, which will design the observation to perform the science target that we want. 
We will be executing the OBs in the month end. This would be ASO responsibility as well as maintenance. But then the consortium will be in charge to take the data from the archive, reduce them, and deliver data products back to the community at to ESO. And this, and if you want the first part of the talk, and uh, uh, I will now move uh, to the second part of the talk, is that uh, what uh, I would say is the very near future on optical spectroscopy service facility for ESO, namely Formos and Moons, as you will hear from Michele soon after. Now I would like to uh, bring you a bit further in the future to think what could be the next step in this context. And I want to introduce you, if you're not aware of a project named Wide Field Spectroscopic Telescope, WST. And I think the first slide is again to set the scene and the motivation, and this is strongly linked again with imaging. Um, so if you, I mean, we have been collecting, you have been collecting a lot of imaging with VIST and VST, but if we think to the next 10 years, uh, there will be a lot, a lot more. I mean, Vera Rubin will be starting, so we'll be scanning the sky repeatedly in different bands in the optical. Euclid, we just heard, started the five, six year survey. So we'll be targeting from the optical to the near infrared again to unprecedented depth on a large patch of the sky. And in the future, Nancy Roman will complement it from the space. And uh, if you've just opened the, the wavelength regime, you can imagine that SKA will be operational at least in phase one by the end of the decade. And so again, you have the sky sample in the radio, again, very deeply, and possible future wide field X ray mission like Star X, if approved, will give you the complementary high energy hand. And as Paolo will tell you on Friday, also CTA will be sampling the sky and very high energy. So it's then therefore not surprising that I will say in a broad uh, community wise, there is a strong demand for a dedicated spectroscopy facility to complement all these imaging or low resolution spectroscopy we have with spectroscopy of appropriate spectral resolution. And just to give you a few um, Example of this, a few years back here at ESO, we conducted a survey pool in our community as part of the VLT in the 2030 exercise and asked our community which is the facility that they really want for the science in the future. And the dedicated optical spectroscopy facility came out by far as the most requested one. And similar wishes you can find in many other strategic plan, being this the Australian plan, the decadal survey of the Canadian long-term plan. And last but not least, also the latest Astronet roadmap was released a few months ago for ground-based facility in the decadal from 2022 to 2035, identified a general purpose wide field uh, I multiplex spectroscopy facility on an 8 meter class telepos as one of the priorities from the ground. Um, so there are ongoing after multi object spectroscopy. I just told you about Formos. Uh, you will hear a weave of this in commissioning. Daisy have been operating for two years. Uh, you will hear from, uh, but I mean, the limitation of them, of course, that they are a four meter telescope and they have a limit on the volume and the magnitude they can sample. Dedicated facility, 10 meter telescope, you will hear from Moons soon after, and then PFS, of course, on Subaru. Uh, but again, here the limitation is that you have the right collecting area of the primary, but you are limited by the fact that you share the facility with many other instruments. And uh, uh, ELTs wise, of course, we will have a MOS for each of ELT, at least this is the plan, but here you are really limited by tiny, tiny field of view to do survey science, as uh, I was trying to mention. So I think there is uh, still room. I mean, there is still the need for dedicated spectroscopy facility on a wide field and with high multiplexes on a 10 meter class telescope. And this is what WST is, is about and a bit of history of the project. Back in 2016, there was a concept named SPECTEL led by Luca Pasquini and Bernard de Labra at ESO. At the same time, ESO appointed a um, working group led by Richard Ellis uh, to develop the science cases. Uh, and they develop also design, as you can see here. But um, uh, after that, there was a, uh, a submission to the U.S. Decadal Survey, but such a project was not recommended before the next decade. And uh, so since two years, uh, there is a new initiative named WST. This is um, uh, the common effort at Consortium Institute, most in Europe, but also in Australia, with a strong representation from Australia. And what we have done is we revised the top level requirements that we will show you in a minute. One of the big changes is to have a multi-object spectrograph with high multiplexing, but at the same time, a monolithic interface spectrograph. Um, we submitted a proposal for the Horizon funding 2022, was well received, but not financed. So we have been conducting an interim study and we aim to submit a new proposal in 2024 next year for a concept study. Um, so WST is, as I say, 
a proposal to join two what we think complementary strategy to do wild field spectroscopy survey, namely a MOS and an interior field spectrograph. Uh, bye. Yes, thanks. I'll try to hurry up. Um, so this is uh, the current top level requirements. So you can see on the on the on the left um, a graphic of the field of view. You can appreciate a large field of view. We are uh, in our requirements. We are aiming of at least two and a half with a goal of five square degree. So you can see how much larger the field of view is compared to VLT. This is the area where the MOS will be locating its fibers. We will have two spectroscopic modes, one at intermediate resolution, low medium resolution with 20,000 fibers covering the wavelength range between 370 to 970. And then uh, an high resolution mode with a more modest uh, multiplexing appropriate for the spectra that you need to take of the stars that you have. Of 2000, uh, we are aiming to a, a high spectral resolution as high high 40,000. And again, in few pass band uh, in the optical. And at the same time, in parallel, and this is the news, is that we will have a monolithic IFU of three by three square arc minutes. So this is what we want uh, with the intermediate spectral resolution covering array, again, uh, the optical bands. And if you think this is essentially uh, nine times the area that you have with MUSE, you can see here MUSE, the tiny MUSE that we do doing a lot of science down there. And what uh, WST will be is the red filled dot there, so nine times, but also has the possibility to mosaic in a much larger area of nine by nine uh, arc minutes. Um, so just uh, because I have to hurry up, just to put into context, I mean, this is uh, to show you on the left the MOS in terms of multiplexing versus the telescope aperture and WST is really opening a new parameter space compared to what we have or what is currently planned. And on the IFS, there is essentially no, no game compared to what we want to do. Um, the MOS, of course, there are other concepts like Megamapper and MAC and Manifest Spectroscopy Explorer, but there are peculiar unique feature of WST compared to MAC, we have this monolithic IFU and Megamapper is, as you know, a cosmologically driven um, facility and so is aiming to lower spectral resolution and again, do not have the interface spectrograph. Um, very briefly, just to show you that we have a first design of the telescope optics, uh, you can see that we have to take the light out to feed the IFS. And this allow us already in this preliminary design to reach three square degree in terms of field of view. Um, some nice drawing of what we want to do. I mean, we will reuse re 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 the technology of the, um, the, of the mosaic mirror developed for ELT. So much RD to do that. And this is the dome. You need a lot of space to put the hundreds of spectrograph that you need uh, down in the, in the dome. And uh, getting to the science uh, briefly, uh, again, this is definitely considered as a multi-purpose facility covering a very broad range of topics from the end of ionization up to characterization of stars. Uh, and so this is just very a first example of possible survey you can conceive going from cosmology to time domain. I want to mention that it will be a strong synergy with future facility like SKA, of course, and the Einstein telescope, and it's pushing much more of what we can do nowadays. I mean, cosmology, you can do what we were discussing before in terms of cosmology service, for example, with Formos to much higher redshift. And on Stregalactic, you can really sample hundreds of square degrees where you can get a characterization of the environment of the large scale structure with the MOS, and then use the IFS to get the kinematics and the CGM, for example, in a through Lyman Alpha or in absorption through Lyman Alpha Forest uh, and many, many other um, science. And two examples of the synergies between MOS and AFS, why we think we really want to have both of them. One I already mentioned, I mean, if you want to study galaxy assembly, you have to sample at the same time gas, dark matter and stars. And here you have an example of what you can do with the MOS, so you can reconstruct the largest structure in emission as well as in absorption through CGM, so IGM tomography. And on the right, you can see an example of what you can do nowadays with MUSE, spending hundreds of hours. You can do in one shot with uh, WST, and essentially you can do resolved Lyman alpha emission, for example, in emission, uh, tracing the CGM. So, and another example of synergy in cluster survey. So you want to have a good understanding of the most massive region of our universe. And so again, you want to put the cluster into a cosmological context that you can do that tracing the large scale structure with the MOS and then using the IFS to the kinematic of the cluster members. Um, where we stand, um, so in the past years, as I said, we have been essentially doing a lot of scientific and technical activities. There was an international conference in Vienna, just to mention one, it was very well attended. 
Um, we had an intense week last week working on the design. And what we are aiming is to publish a science white paper at the beginning of next year and submit the proposal in March 2024 for Horizon. If we are successful, this will give us three years of funding to go to, a, to develop a, a well advanced concept study uh, by the end of 2028. And uh, very Last slides, we have a large science team. These are the working group and the people that are leading the effort at the moment. I'm uh, the project scientist and these are the leads of the different working group. And the message I want to pass, if you're interested in being involved in WST, please do so. If the science team is totally open, you can just uh, went to our webpage and subscribe or you can drop me an email and I will stop here. And thanks for your attention. Take any questions.